What is up, company gang? I fucking shot this video four times in a row already because I'm a dumbass and the camera keeps facing the wrong way. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's facing the right way this time. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah, so anyways, um, just a little bit of an update uh, since my previous video. Um, well, um, although I said that I'd be more productive and stuff, I guess I haven't really been that much more productive. The only thing is that I've set like a timer for like one and a half hours on my Nintendo Switch so that it shuts off. And I've set like a screen time timer on my um, iPhone so that it blocks like um, all of the fucking uh, distracting apps like YouTube and stuff after I use them for an hour. And I've blocked all these apps on my computer as well. So hopefully, I'll be a little bit more productive and make more videos or something, more music. And I've made a little bit more music than usual. But anyways, back to the main topic of the video, which is what my parents think about my need situation. And, um, well, I guess the answer to that is kind of a trick answer because they really don't think anything, anything of it. And that's because they don't know that I'm neat. Um, I haven't told them, you know, about this label or I haven't told them specifically that I'm a neat and um, because if they knew about, uh, I guess, me being quote unquote a neat and um, they knew about the whole label and what that implies, like maybe if they looked it up on YouTube or something, I feel like they would be a lot more worried and as a consequence, you know, you know, try and pressure me to move out and eventually uh, kick me out of the house and stuff. But they don't know that they think that this is just a phase for me and that this is something that I'll grow out of and that, um, you know, I'm depressed and stuff and, you know, um, or that I'm mentally ill or something and that I'll eventually just get over it and get a job eventually. And, you know, these things are not entirely untrue because, well, I don't intend to stay like this forever and I do get depressed sometimes, but at the same time, um, I am kind of living life as a DJ and not really doing shit. Um, just living as a stereotypical me, basically, you know, cooming all day, watching anime and uh, just being based. But anyways, um, yeah, so there's that. And hold on, I think I hear them. Okay, I think that's, they're not coming down anyways. Yeah, so there's that. And at the same time, I do sense um, some worry from them. And, you know, this is often in the form of them. I can sometimes see them looking disapprovingly at me or like, or like, I don't know, just being pensive whenever the issue of, of like work is brought up or like stuff like that, or they seem kind of like pensive or like I can see, feel like a sort of tension basically sometimes. Sometimes it's not there, but sometimes it is. And also I can tell that they're quite embarrassed about me being neat because on several occasions they've lied about my status. Like they've actually gone ahead and like talked for me and made excuses for me. And it might seem, um, well, that it's for my well being, but in reality, uh, if you know anything about Asian culture, it's about it's often involves parents comparing their kids against each other and oftentimes they'll they've said that i'm like looking for work or that i'm currently taking a gap year or these are just various excuses they've given over time and i guess lies which i don't really blame them for and in some ways i'm thankful for them lying because it saves me from having to explain anything but yeah they'll say stuff like oh something they even said stuff like oh like he's going to go to music school, which is because I did express my interest in going to music school with them at one point. So they actually said that even though they didn't like send me to music school or weren't willing to, but it's just interesting how they said that. But anyways, there's that. And um, yeah, I don't really blame them for that. And um, they are embarrassed, but at the same time, they, they seem to not really care or they seem to always brush it under the table because of how busy they are like for example my dad on several occasions has expressed to me that 
I should be getting a job, that I'm at the age where I should be working or looking for employment and stuff like that. But he, um, and this is especially true right the period right before COVID happened, like the few months before COVID where he brought it up more and more. But um, since COVID happened, um, he hasn't really brought it up. So thank God for COVID. Hope um, it continues on to uh, 2021 and kills, you know, millions of people so I don't have to work. But okay, I'm just joking. But um, anyways, um, yeah. So yeah, he brought it up several times and, you know, he has expressed that he, he has a desire for me to work and you know um i guess you know most of it is for my well-being if i'm being honest so and more because he believes that's what's best for me or they believe that's what's best for me as a boom i guess as being part of the boomer generation because from their experiences i guess they were able to i guess for them they lived in economic conditions where working the average job any job would probably lead to a prosperous life being able to buy a house and shit but obviously that's not true nowadays but i guess that's his logic at least that i should get a job at like i don't know even like subway or some shit so i can buy a house which is nonsensical but anyways there's that and um but off, even then like he'd bring it up but then it wouldn't he wouldn't pursue me on it because, um, well, like, I guess he's too busy. So he kind of just like gets swept under the rug eventually because like he'd forget about it for a while. And then I'd basically go back to doing jack shit because I'm a lazy procrastinator. Uh, so yeah, um, and I'm sure it'll probably get brought up more and more uh, when COVID returns. So yeah, fingers crossed. Hope Corona Chan continues to, uh, to stay in society and uh, yeah. I'm fucking corny anyways so yeah there's that and aside from that I think there's several reasons why I'm able to live this lifestyle or why they seem to be okay with me being here as well and um for like a more general general reason um from my understanding there seem to be two types of neat parents there's those that um want their kids to move out by the time they're 18 and you know like those you tend to be like western parents or like like i guess like white parents not to be racist or anything but they tend to like um yeah expect their kids to move out by the time they're 18 and get a, a job and get a house rent an apartment whatever be independent and um those parents tend to be like hard asses on their kids and treat them like shit and be passive aggressive to try and get them to move out. And then there's parents on the opposite end of the spectrum who um, essentially are, you know, more like Eastern, I guess, oriented, oriental. No, that's not the right term. It's kind of racist, but like, yeah, just like that. And they um, essentially kind of it's more acceptable for kids to live in with their parents. So that's one thing I have going for me as an Asian. And um, like, yeah, for them. And also there's the other types. It's not just that. It's also the fact that for them, I'm always like perpetually a kid in need of assistance. So because of that, they're, they, they, I think it's like a perspective thing, like them being a lot older and like me being x amount of years younger than them they always see me as like a 10 year old forever and because of that they they see me as like unable to do anything for myself and infantilize me a lot and um you know say stuff like oh you're a growing boy you should eat more or you know do a lot of things for me that i should be doing myself or stuff like that and um yeah so they do that stuff and um Yeah, infantilize me and as a result of this you know maybe i it's like it's hard to say whether them doing this is causing me to be a man child or me being a man child is causing them to treat me this way because it also is partly my fault because i don't show a lot of um initiative and like act like a man i never bring up the topic of like girls and stuff because well it's super awkward especially that given that they're like really religious and it's just really really awkward like that's just the family dynamic i guess and 
yeah, there's that. And in some ways I'm like a lot of like, as it's kind of similar to like a lot of what a lot of, what a lot of other needs have said, on like Reddit, like it's like they see them as like pets or like little like pets that to like keep around the house. And my mom has like said on several occasions, oh, how she's proud that I'm always with her because it shows that I'm like, that was strong family, whatever that means. Like, but in reality, it's more that um, she wants me here to like keep me here, I guess, as part of like, um, what's it called? Yeah, as sort of like a pet basically. And yeah, and also um, they both each have individual reasons for wanting to keep me here as well. And what is that, uh, you know, from my dad's side, it's because, you know, my mom is always like a hard ass on him and, uh, you know, treating him, like shouting him. And in a lot of ways, I used to experience that same behavior in the past from her, especially growing up as a kid. And because of that, I can empathize with my dad a lot. And um, as a result, it's kind of like the almost like trauma bonded a lot at some point. And I would listen to his grievances and we talk about it and, you know, like, so in that sense, I feel like I'm all, even now, like he seems to be under a lot of stress from her and I, I'll, I'm always willing to listen to him. So in that way, like, I feel like he is kind of okay with the idea of me staying here because while well, I feel like if I leave, he might lose his mind and well, I have no one to talk to. So that's kind of dark, but yeah, there's that aspect of it. And the other part of it is that, well, my mom has something known as borderline personality disorder or BPD, and I'm not gonna go into all the details of that, but one key component of it is the fact that these people with BPD have a huge fear of being abandoned by people or, and they perceive anything like involving people going, getting away from them as a, them abandoning them or cutting all ties. So because of that, in my mom's in my mom's eyes, me leaving the house and being independent and stuff would essentially be equivalent to me abandoning her and not loving her. Like for example, she lost her shit when I moved out and was gonna stay in university for my first year, and she tried to guilt trip me into uh, going to a closer university, which wasn't as good because she said I wasn't I didn't love her, that I was a bad son, and that like stuff like that, and that I um, yeah I didn't care for her, like I should just all university to the same, etc. And um, so my voice hurts. And um, <clears throat> yeah, there's, so there's that aspect of it. And because of that, um, it's like, she'll do anything in her power to keep me here, which kind of plays the whole like pet thing, right? Like keep me as a pet because in her eyes, it's, it's the only other option for her to not being abandoned. It's like the opposite of being abandoned is like me always being there for her and you know she grew up with a really shitty childhood involving her being abandoned by her parents like not actually abandoned but like sort of abandoned which i'll get into maybe in the future and um yeah so it's like i don't hate her for it i kind of get where she's coming from after i matured quite a bit i realized why she was doing the thing that why she was doing the things she was but at the same time yeah it's just that's like the whole dynamic is that she has BPD and essentially she'll try and like infantilize me and or like control me in a way like through like various means but this is just one means is like coddling me and infantilizing me so that I don't become independent and I just never become strong enough to face the world on my own and it's kind of like the idea of the eatable mother from the uh, poem Oedipus or Oedipus however the fuck you pronounce it but um yeah, there's that aspect of it. And also, I guess that I'm not like a complete degen. You know, I sometimes fight with my parents, but it's pretty rare. And it's more so that we're on pretty good terms and not like an asshole. And I'm thankful that they're not assholes to me. Like I lucked out that way for sure. And um, that, um, yeah, like it's not like I fucking pee and piss jugs and like take it take shits and smear it all over the walls and screech like or like some fucking shit like autistic screeching like or like 
smash like punch holes in the wall like i don't do that so i guess that's definitely something i have going for me and maybe why they haven't kicked me out and why they're more okay with me um you know being neat even though they don't actually know that i'm a quote unquote neat anyways uh hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh sorry for talking so low like i don't like talking like this either because it fucking like damages my vocal cords because i'm not using them properly and projecting but anyways um I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below if you did. And this is Comfy Neat uh, signing out.